Welcome back to the Grey Lounge, where Andy, so called because it is Andy's Lounge. And my name is Grey. <laughs> Cunning. Eh? It's a great name. <laughs> Randy and I have been for the most part during lockdown. We did start outside. Temperatures in Qatar have been rising. Mm. Um, so we've, we've beaten the retreat to where it's more comfortable to sit and talk to you from. Normally at this point, I'd be on my telephone um, running mm. through some newspaper stories mm. for you. But I think today, Andy, I, I'm glad I, you're not I am at the point whereby will they, won't they, should they, shouldn't they, can they, can't they, I, I am genuinely tired of that. So until Thursday, the stories by and large are all the same. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. I'm glad you came to that decision uh, today <laughs> that we wouldn't go through all the will they want they again because I'm really excited about who we're going to talk to. Our guest is Jürgen Klinsmann <clears throat> from the Pacific Coast. Jürgen, Morgan. Guten Morgen. Yeah. <laughs> Meine Herren. Good morning. <laughs> the good morning, the two of you. It's a real pleasure to seeing you. Oh, no, oh, thank you. The pleasure, the pleasure is all ours, Jürgen. Thank you, Andrew. You took the words out of my mouth. So, so be specific for us. Where are you on the Pacific coast? Well, I live south of Los Angeles uh, since uh, 1998, basically, since the World Cup in France. My wife, she's from here, and uh, so we raised our two children here in California. And uh, it's still the place to be. I, I, I think it's... Uh, uh, yeah, one of the, uh, the most beautiful places around the world and uh, I've traveled a lot, been in a lot of places, but it's, it's difficult to beat Southern California. Oh, yes. How has lockdown been for you, Jürgen? Um, lockdown has been, I would really say we are very privileged. Uh, it, it's pretty easy here. Obviously, the same guidelines like around the world, social distancing, mm -hmm. face mask, wherever it's required and, and uh, uh, we could until the weekend now we could always pick up our food or go for a coffee take it out uh, now the restaurants are reopening um, step by step we're getting back to normal and and we hope obviously you know by watching the news around the world that hopefully everyone around the world is is, is getting back to where it's been before mm. so. i'd be relaxed if i was you you can put your confidence in donald trump can't you yes absolutely <laughs> 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 oh, um, no, you caught, you caught me on the wrong foot. <laughs> I've actually heard he's thinking of emigrating to Germany to run for government there. <laughs> to be fair, I, I would, to be fair. Uh, so th this is a time, Jürgen, this is a time I think for us all to share, if you don't mind, one or two memories. Um, you, you, you come from an era that, um, I take yourself back to joining Tottenham and the press conference ahead of at the time when, when we as Brits were of the opinion that, that footballers in our league didn't occasionally fall over. And you, 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 you were the man accused of doing that and said you'd been diving, I think, in, 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 the, in the Tottenham pool. Wh whose idea was all that? Because it was beautifully diffused. Well, when, when this all in, in 1994, after the world in the United States, um, when I got this opportunity by the, the former chairman, Alan Sugar, to, to join Spurs, you know, the media came up with that, you know, diver um, story and, and I was kind of uh, uh, irritated and I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, but I had a, I had a friend that in, in uh, Monaco at that time, I played for Ace Monaco, and he uh, simply suggested, you know, you got to make a out of it. They, they, they're testing you. The English test you with their they a special humor uh, that we all know and 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 let's see how they're taking it so at the press conference i i asked the media if they didn't know of school in london i would take some classes <laughs> and so that was that was kind of that was kind of a step number one you know in solving the issue <laughs> um and then we and then we had the first game at sheffield wednesday yeah. and uh, we drove up with the team bus and and that's uh, to the stand there uh, where we kind of went, went into the, the dressing rooms and, and there were thousands of fans waiting for our team bus and uh, they, they, the fans pull, pulled up their, uh, um, yeah, their, their, their signs with uh, 5.8, 5.9, 5.6, <laughs> thousands of and And my teammate, obviously, they were cracking up my, in the bus, you know, said, hey, you know, this is all for you, you know. <laughs> And then, so, and then, oh, uh, carry on, Jürgen. Sorry. Teddy, yeah, Teddy, Teddy Sharing had the brilliant idea. Said, you know what, Jürgen, you score your first goal. We're all gonna do a dive. <laughs> and then, obviously, 
<laughs> it's it's it, it all happened the way Teddy predicted it. You know, we win this game four three, a spectacular game, both sides. You yeah. know, and and uh, and I score my first goal for Spurs, and uh, and and I, I dove in front of the Sheffield fans, <laughs> and uh, and everybody was just laughing. I mean, they were just cracking up, and then I thought, okay, story is over, but. No, sorry, it was not over because uh, Teddy Sheringham, uh, son Charlie, at this time he was he was a little boy. Um, obviously, later on he became a player himself. But but uh, he he said to Teddy too, can you tell please Jurgen that next game he's got to do it again because all the kids now, <laughs> yes, all, all the. All the kids in the, in the parks all over London they're doing the dive, you know. Oh, no. So. So uh, the next game comes along a week later. We play Everton, and I score a bicycle goal, uh, a goal and bicycle kick goal. And, and it, it, even you know, I mean, the defenders, everybody ran over, and we we did the dive again. And, and that, that was the story. And um, I think it was um, for me a wonderful experience. First of all, um, I, I learned how to take English humor. I, I I learned how to kind of put another note on top of it, and not getting Kind of you know that, that we, we usually would do as Germans. Probably we would get so that lesson was, was very important. Was very important to me personally, but also I think it was a wonderful um, gesture because it came from from Teddy's idea. But but the, the people in England saw then also a German making fun of himself. You know, I mean having having a having a laugh and and understanding. You know. <laughs> Uh, um, the, the, the humor and the different approach to it and, and the culture. And, and uh, for me, that, that year at Spurs, then 94, 95, uh, uh, was probably my best ever year as a, as a club player um, mm. because I just felt I felt so home. I felt mm. uh, being part of uh, White Hart Lane, I'd be part of the people, being part of what was happening there. Obviously, we didn't have the team then that goes, you know, towards Euro Europe and, and in a Champions League or or winning the, the Premier League, you know. Mm. And that's the reason why I left one year later then was because I wanted to win some titles and I had the offer by Bayern Munich to go for titles right away, which I won then with Bayern Munich. And, but this year was just unforgettable because of, uh, not only from a football standpoint, I was voted then uh, Football of the Year as well, mm. but it was just for me uh, uh, just a social um, lecture and experience that I'm always being grateful to everyone uh, um, in England, I, I think Jurgen, the way you the way you diffused everything with your initial press conference, the the initial the dive mm -hmm. at Wednesday. Um, you see, as you grow up as a lad, you you you, Germ I, me and Germany. I, I, I'm not having that what? since, since 1970. So, so you you're not you're, having what Germans or German football. Gerd Müller. I used to hate Müller. Beckenbauer. Oh. My goodness, and yet they, these were magnificent people. Well, now the third well, one. Hold on, as a Scot, one, Jürgen, I'm not party to those feelings, of course, <laughs> as you the, understand. The, the third one was Klinsman, and yet you arrived and just went, "Oh yeah, and ha let's have fun." And and I think I wasn't the only one. I think we, in general, mm. at that time, yeah, all we went, "Do you know what? I love this guy. Yeah. This is fantastic." And I think that's why probably uh, you enjoyed it, Jürgen, as much as you did because. I think we fell in love with each other, didn't we? <laughs> us as a collective and you with us. Yeah, I, I, I mean, for, for me, this experience, I mean, I was one of the first players coming then into the, yeah. the newly founded Premier League and, and I, I started a little bit, you know, the whole trend and for a lot of other European players. Um, obviously, the, the weight shifted in Europe um, towards the Premier League because of the television money coming in and and a new situation developed in 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 England. Uh, afterwards came Ruth Gouley, it came Zola, it came Viali, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah, came yeah. and Arsene Wenger and, and many other uh, personalities. But but for me, the, the, the experience was really with the people. I mean, I felt just at ease with everyone, you know, going for beer and having fish and chips and, and, and just <laughs> going up and down. It was, yeah, it was for, for me just, I, I just felt like, yeah, that's that, that's kind of a home, a second home, and and uh, um, so that's why I always appreciate those those days. Do you think Jurgen had it not been Bayern Munich, you know, the pinnacle of German football, the best club in Germany predominantly? Do you think if it hadn't been them, you might have stayed that initial spell? You might have stayed longer with it, with us. Probably yes, yeah, probably yes. I mean, I came. 
I, I, I came from two top clubs. I, I now played for AS Monaco with Arsene Wenger yeah. for two years. We reached the, se the semi-finals of the Champions League in, in 94. Um, so a very good team with growing talent uh, of uh, Yuri Jokev, Lilian Tiram, uh, Emmanuel yeah. Petit. Yeah. They were all my teammates in, in Monaco. <laughs> And before that, I played for three years for Inter Milan and uh, won a UEFA Cup. And, and uh, I, I mean, I had five Italian national team players. Obviously, during that time at Inter Milan, we won the World Cup in 1990. And, and so, but, but, but it was just... <laughs> We've won the World Cup in yeah, 1990. Yeah, yeah. As you do, as you do. In a certain way, what I wanted to say, in a, in a certain way, when, when I had that, that wonderful year at Spurs, I, I was 30 years old, 31 almost, mm. and I, I was running out of time. I knew I was running out of time if, you know, if there's a, a couple of big things still to, to win, and then you got to probably make a move mm. because Spurs at that at that specific time was not capable yet no. to yet to compete for the title. And then uh, obviously when when Franz, Franz Beckenbauer called me personally, I was sitting in in my in my muse yeah. house in, in in Hampstead. Oh, as you do, <laughs> and, as you and, do, it only gets better. And, it and, only gets better. This is wonderful. <laughs> And when yeah. it is like, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Bobby Robson calls you or, or you know, it, it's or Alex, or Alex Ferguson calls you. When Be Franz Beckenbauer calls you as, as a German, yes, um, yes, it's, it, means the it means the world to you. It yes. means the world to you. And I, I picked up the phone and he said, would you have an interest, you know, in joining us? Uh, you know, they had a change of coach in that moment. Yeah. You were on the list, number one of his. And, and, uh, uh, and I remember my wife Debbie. She said she said uh, next to me, and she was looking at me. And it was a very short conversation. Um, and I said, uh, Franz, yeah, I will give me a, 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 some time, but I will call you back tomorrow. Uh, but I knew during his words, okay, that's uh, it's mm. done. It's done because um, <laughs> it's just very rare that something like this happens. And and uh, so I, I felt like you you have to do it. It's it's just no other no other way. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so that's how that's how it happened. <laughs> did did you actually ever end up playing with Franz Beckenbauer? Oh, did you? No, 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 no. Oh, well, um, let me let he, me, so let he me, was my. Yeah. yeah, well, let me just tell you why I asked the question. I did. Did you? Yes. And who was captain? A charity match at Barnet. He was working <laughs> for ITV at the time, and the boys brought him along, and and I I played in a charity game with Franz Beckenbauer. Were so. you her skipper? Uh, I don't think I was. I think Alan Parry probably okay. was at the time. Yeah, mm. but there you go. So you can keep your World Cups and your Muse House in Hampstead. <laughs> what you didn't do is play with French Beckenbauer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, Jurgen, as well, just quickly on the Premier League, because you 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 came in the very early stages of the Premier League, yes. first two or three years. Did it did it ever cross your mind then that the Premier League would become the giant that it has become? Um, no, I, at this time you, you, you couldn't foresee a, a future of the Premier League in, in this uh, in this magnitude. Um, mm. um, but but uh, you sensed obviously you sensed for me as a player coming there and then playing in, in all the different uh, stadiums um, all over England. Um, you, you just got a sense as a foreign player. So how how socially deeply connected everyone mm. is. With, with football uh, in the in, in in England, and uh, so you so you wish that this will become really some uh, um, some some very very special place, you know, to showcase it around the world. Um, that they do it in such a professional, I mean, in such a perfect way, how they build that uh, the Premier League then over yeah. the, the the last thirty years, you know, we couldn't imagine that, but that was uh, brilliant marketing around the world. Um, obviously, you know, the, the television rights had a lot to do with that, but still there's a lot, a lot of work that you have to put into. Um, and, uh, and, and this energy that was created then around the Premier League, and it's still t there today, you know, mm. and no matter where you live around the globe, if you're in South America and Australia and Asia and Africa, um, the, the league number one portrait in the world is the Premier League. Yeah. Even in other leagues, they, they caught up, they, they, they're getting closer to it, but still, you know that the trendsetter is still the Premier League, and and uh, for me it was just very special. Looking back now, that I, I was able to um, to join the Premier League at the very early stage. 
Have you been close at any point, Jurgen, to coming back as a coach in the Premier League? Um, yeah, here and there, there are some, you know, or there were some talks, you know, and 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 and, um, but it never got to us to a point where you then made a commitment to it. But well, it's just uh, us. Uh, you know, throw, I, throw, hold on, just it's only us. It's no only one, us. No, no one's one else listening. Is, no one's <laughs> one listening, Jurgen. <laughs> so, so you can trust us. Yes. I'm not going to tell anybody. Nor me. Where, where were these just? <laughs> where were these just talks taking place? Let me throw one at you. Uh, Liverpool? Yes, they took place, yes. <laughs> but they took place, they, they, they took place, you know, uh, yeah, about, I think, 12 years ago. Uh, but they took place in the United States. I didn't ah, have to fly over. Okay, right. So, so is that the only time or were, were there others? No, there were, there were others, you know, but it, it's always, you know, for... Um, for this type of a very obviously important role, a management role, it, 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 everything has to kind of fall into place, has to, to fit. And uh, uh, those talks with, with Liverpool, I think it was in 2008 then, um, yeah, they didn't get to that final kind of final stage where they said, okay, now it's, it, it really fits, let's, let's do that. And, uh, um, but, but once you know your, your playing days are over and you decide then to go into the management role, um, or you do fulfill maybe other roles as well in the, in the mm. meantime, but you're not active. Um, you always have to have an open, an open ear and an open eye for, for whatever happens. You know, I never thought in the first place I'm going to coach Germany uh, for the 2006 World Cup or then oh. coach Bayern Munich or, or do, do a, 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 I was almost six years with the United States, which was a tremendous experience because I learned to kind of... Uh, uh, to see places, you know, in Central America that that are, you know, if you if you haven't been to those places yet, you wouldn't believe the stories I, I could tell you today. <laughs> you know, playing in a in, in Honduras in San Pedro Sula, the, the murder city number one in the world, <laughs> or, or you know, you, you go fly down to Guatemala, you 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 are you are in places that that you, you never imagined that you yeah, you, right. you experience those places uh, with wonderful people everywhere and. And so football, football is this kind of a um, environment that is full of surprises and and uh, will always remain full of surprises. So, who who knows what the what the future still brings to us? Well, uh, Andy, I'm sure he's going to ask that at some point. So, so you felt you couldn't work with Daniel Levy then? <laughs> 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 no, I have a very, I have a very good relationship with Daniel, uh, and uh, uh, but those, those talks otherwise, don't go anywhere. <laughs> no, other, otherwise he wouldn't have invited me for the opening game of the Legends, you know, with Inter Milan and yeah. <laughs> So no, so, I, I I have a lot of a lot of appreciation for Daniel. <laughs> One question I wanted to ask you, Jürgen, about your your management. You talked about coaching Germany 2006 World Cup. That was in Germany. Yes, we were there. Right. You go so close to doing ultimately what you wanted to do, player and coach, winning the World Cup. Beckenbauer. But why walk away straight after the World Cup like that? Why? When you had come so close. Um, I mean, those two years uh, when I kind of uh, had the honour to guide the German team towards mm. 2006, the, the World Cup in their own country, um, they were very, very intense. They were extreme. I mean, imagine, you know, you would guide England um, to their, their home World Cup. The, the, the World Cup is in England and you you basically have that role for two years, um, which everybody comments on it every single day. Everybody has a say in it. If it's the, the politicians, if it's the organizing committee, yeah. if it's the media, if it's every club, every league. every. So I, I've done that for two years and then... Uh, in those two years, I, I, I was kind of, uh, um, yeah, I, I had the opinion I, I need to do that out of the United States. So I flew back and forth 42 <laughs> times. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, count, they counted every trip that I did, you know, from Los Angeles to, uh, to Germany. It's, it's, been, it's been an extreme, extreme experience and a wonderful experience. And obviously we got close. Um, we, we lost in the semifinal against uh, an amazing Italian team. Um, but I just felt like I, I cannot go any further from there. I, I was right. exhausted. My obviously my family stayed back in in California, and I just you know wanted to 
to, to take a break and yeah, and uh, yeah, that. and and that's uh, you know when you have maybe then let past three or six months you would have said oh I should have maybe continued or um, but in that moment when you make decisions you you make them in that specific moment uh, in time and, and that and that moment in time the decision was just I was exhausted and I just wanted to have a break. So you that that long list of people that had an opinion about what you were doing as national team manager mm. is it more difficult to manage? Germany or the München? <laughs> no, ev every environment is in a professional game is 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 not easy to handle. It's it's um, it's a fascinating role, the role of a manager, or we call it a head coach. Then in in, in the other countries, and um, it's it's people management, and uh, there are not only 25, 30 top class players that you have to make happy every day, you try at least to make them happy. Yeah. Uh, you you also handle a huge amount of staff people from a medical department to a media department to a marketing department to um, to so many different people that work around the big clubs, you know, and obviously Bayern Munich is, is, a, is an amazing, uh, huge club, one of the top five in the world. Um, so sometimes it all works hand in hand and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and those experiences are there to make. And if it doesn't work out the way you you hope, then you have to accept it. And 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 that's life, you know. So uh, I'm very grateful for every single experience I could make in in, in my um, managing career so far. I was grateful for every playing experience uh, that I could. I was able to play in in four different countries. I kind Probably. of grew up as a as a little kid in, in Stuttgart and then moved on to Italy, then to Arsene Wenger in France, then to obviously Spurs and got back to Germany, went back to Italy again, <laughs> came back to Spurs again. So, so one thing that's why my, 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 my Beetle, my, my Volkswagen Beetle fell apart when I moved then from Tottenham to Bayern. It <laughs> kind of didn't want to drive anymore. So I, one, the la last question, you just said I, my, my managerial <laughs> career so far. Does that mean there's more left in you? And might that bring you back? Oh, to a, who knows? I'm not, oh my gosh. My, my career is definitely not over yet. No, I'm far too young. <laughs> and one thing from me, Jürgen, can you send Jay Goppingen my best, please? You know him very well, yes? <laughs> yes. Yes, I know him very well. Yeah, yeah. I played in a local league here in the United States, and uh, uh, the, the the guy that ran the league he didn't want to blow up my name because it's a purely amateur league. But 15 years ago, so he used my 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 place of birth, which is the city of Göppingen, a very small city <laughs> close to Stuttgart. That's where I was born. So, and then he put a J in front of it, so he had a, a new player in his league. Um, and uh, uh, that that was a funny story, but you know the story hasn't ended because I'm still playing today. The, the <laughs> league is now over for uh, over 48 years of age league, and wow. we have a blast every Sunday morning. We have a blast. Fantastic. And, uh, and so once, are you, are you once the game is over, Klinsman? No, I'm I'm Klinsman. Back to <laughs> and are, are you still scoring <laughs> on a regular basis? Are you still hitting the back of that net as regularly? Yeah, and it still feels good. Ah, it, all, it never leaves you, Jürgen. Never leaves you. No. Jürgen, thank you Hopefully. so much. I, thank I, you I, so I much, myself Jürgen. Day after day, there's so many kind people that have joined us during this period of time. But uh, for, for you, extra special thanks. It's been brilliant and, and uh, wish we could go on longer. But great to see you. Take care of yourself and the family over there. Thanks, Jürgen. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll catch thank up so in Doha much. sometime. We're, look, we're looking for safe. ambassadors. Stay safe. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah, Jürgen, you thank too. you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> By mentioning having played with Franz Beckenbauer takes us back to one of the early programmers when I did my topper 11. Oh. The 11 you'd played with. And if you remember, I... You tried to top it. I, 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 I think I probably did. But you better explain um, Jay. For yes. I, I was just thinking I'd heard this story about when he went to LA and he was there and he wanted to play, but he could only play in this amateur league. Mm. But they didn't want to put his name Jürgen Klinsmann now. <laughs> so as he said there, he, they made up this name. But can you imagine, Richard? Forget that. This is when he was still really he looks fit now. Yeah. But this is when he could play. So you can imagine those amateur teams running out and going, never mind that centre forward, never heard of them. Come on, we'll be all right. <laughs> but and the next minute Jurgen Klinsman <laughs> runs out with a number nine on. Unmistakable <laughs> blonde hair and his yes. run was yes. like nobody else's. A leggy wasn't run, it? wasn't it? It was a leggy run. <laughs> and Jay, of course it was Jurgen yes, Klinsman. Anyway that's it for another day. Do please <laughs> join us tomorrow when Phil Neville 
all things mm. being equal, Good. will be with us to talk about uh, well his career, uh, his current job, and um, what, maybe what, the future of women's football, if there is one. Well, and I don't, don't say know. that. I don't say that flippantly. No, that's that's on the agenda mm -hmm. for Phil tomorrow. In the meantime, thanks for your company wherever in the world you are, either watching on Be In Sports or YouTube. We appreciate the time you've taken out to spend with us. And stay safe. <laughs>